The Rangers signed center Vincent Trocek, seven years, $39 million. Forward Claude Giroux to the Senators, three years, $19.5 million. Center Robert Thomas staying with the Blues, eight years, $65 million. With Mario and Musso. Mario and Musso have your early line on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. I mean, we're just here to have fun and win and have fun by winning. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios, here's Mario Jerez and Matt Musso. And a good Wednesday afternoon. Welcome in, Matt Musso, alongside Mario Jerez to my right. We have your early line. Casey Gaines and Taylor Sharp along for the ride on the audio and video boards. Glad you're along for the ride with us here on the hump day as well. Plenty, plenty to get to. Another edition of Win Total Wednesday today. We look at the NFC East. Very interesting division uh, to get to. No real easy pick when it comes to the win totals. Kind of looking at them earlier, doing some research. Uh, kind of was split on, on all four teams. So we'll get into that a little bit at 215. Daily spread. And so much more. Mario, how are you? Doing well, Musso. NFC East is definitely an interesting division, so it's good that it's July here. A lot of time to break it down before the season starts, and I'll get the thoughts flowing. I eventually put some money down and hopefully eventually win some money. It's crazy with the NFC East how, I mean, how the division has honestly improved so, so much this offseason, at least on paper. Uh, you'll wait and see when the guys take the field, if, if that's actually you know the case. But uh, for a division that just regularly gets labeled the NFC least uh that might not be in that joke that joke might not be in the cards this year so you might have to put those memes away uh for a season we'll, we'll see we'll, again we'll get into that at 215. I'm with you excited to break it down right now though let's start how we start each day our daily spread presented by suspense games daily. Daily. Spread. What are Mario and Musso watching tonight? I'm talking about big money. Real big money. This is our daily spread. Mario, we're going to do something for today's NRFI that we normally don't do. Something that we kind of avoid at all costs the majority of the time. And that's head to Coors Field, home of the Colorado Rockies, where we find a plus money NRFI plus $1.10 dollar ten. Padres Rockies game number three of that series Joe Musgrove versus Chad cool the pitching matchup dictates this be the play Musgrove 12 and three no runs first inning on the season he's got three straight he's faced 57 first inning batters two walks an opponent's batting average against the 200 really solid numbers course field really tough place to pitch altitude and whatnot Musgrove has had success there, though, at Coors Field in his career. Two appearances so far, sports a 277 ERA at the Hitters Haven. That's pretty much as good as you can do in that ballpark. You look at Chad Cool, he's 11 and 5, no runs at first inning on the season. And again, solid considering he's got to pitch there a lot because he plays for the Rockies. 16 starts, the opponent hits just 237 off Cool in the first inning. The thing to watch with him, though, is the walks. That's where he gets in trouble. So he needs to really throw strikes tonight. 10 walks in 69 first inning batters. That's just, that's not going to cut it. It's worth pointing out as well with Chad Cool, keeping with the Coors Field theme, that his home NRFI split is actually better than his road NF, uh, in a NRFI split. He's 5-2 and two at home this season. So let's roll with it. Little plus money, plus 110, Padres, Rockies, no runs in the first inning. Take that, Coors Field. We like it. Hashtag altitude. Hopefully it takes advantage of, uh, of Coors Field again. He's been doing well there. Uh, the pitcher for the Rockies. We're going to start in the summer league tonight, Musso, for our first play, where the Pelicans are a four-point favorite against the Washington Wizards, and tip-off is at 5 p.m. here. And summer league so far, for me, in terms of my picks and for the Pelicans, has been going awful. Both their first round of first round and second round draft selections are injured at the moment. Their first round pick Dyson Daniels got hurt in the first game, sprained his ankle, crashed to the floor, was driving to the rim out of control. Doesn't seem like a serious injury, just a sprained ankle. The x-rays are negative, but he's likely done for the summer league and he's definitely not playing tonight. And I don't know if you saw the news about EJ Liddell Musso, but 
Uh, that's a punch in the stomach if you're a Pelicans fan. Just a disaster. Yeah. He has a torn ACL, is out indefinitely. And this is somebody who we thought, me and you both, was going to be a steal for the Pelicans in the latest draft. He averaged 19, 8, and 2 per game in his last year at Ohio State. And this is just really unfortunate. And the Pelicans are really depleted going into this game because Najee Marshall, Trey Murphy, both shut down for the rest of Summer League. I doubt Jose Alvarado is going to play tonight. I doubt he plays for the rest of the Summer League. And we're probably going to see a lot of guys like Jared Harper and John Petty II, who will almost assuredly not make this team. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Wizards, they, they have a first-round pick that's known by a lot of our audience, and that's Johnny Davis, the rookie out of Wisconsin. And he has not been playing very well so far, Musso. In his first game, he just went one for nine from the field. Johnny Davis was a little better in his second game, four for 11 from the field, 11 points against the Sun. So maybe he's in position to have his best game tonight after a couple of reps in the summer league. But that being said, I think the Pelicans win this game, and I think they cover the four points because these guys may not make the team, but they're really hungry to prove themselves. And maybe they're auditioning for another team that's not the New Orleans Pelicans. So betting summer league can be wacky, as uh, we can kind of see by my first couple of selections on this show. So that being said, I'm going with the Pelicans and what's left of the Summer League Pelicans minus four against the Wizards tonight. I think the Pelicans should just cancel the rest of Summer League. Agreed. Just, just, there's no reason to do this to yourself anymore. It's not good. Trey Murphy, I think, took advantage of the reps before he got shut down. He went out there. He looked really good. And he's still a second-year player. You know, it's important to get the reps. But clearly... Players like him, Najee Marshall, they don't really need Summer League. So yeah. I'm with you. No, no real reason for the Pelicans to still be there. Besides the 16-1 to ticket that I still have on them to win Summer League, <laughs> but that's not looking really good. Right? You, you might want to cut your losses there and cash out, bro. I mean, you might just want to tap out on that one. That would probably be the smart thing to do, but I'm going to just keep getting uh, – I'm not going to tap out. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be uh, – yeah, it's it's not going good, but gonna going to stay with the pick there. Okay. I To each their own. Uh, Astros, they visit the Angels tonight. The Angels, your favorite in this one, minus $1.15 and 838 Central first pitch. Christian Javier versus Shohei Otani. Otani is on an absolute heater right now. The reigning AL MVP, my goodness, he has not given up an earned run in his last four starts. The Angels, albeit a terrible baseball team, have won Otani's last five starts. It is absolutely, no question about it, their best chance to win any given baseball game when Showtime is on the mound. Then there's the success against the opponent. We love precedent, right? Otani has faced these Astros twice already this season. Both times came in April, early in the year. A lot, a lot of things are different since then, I will give you that. But in those outings, he fired a combined 10 and two-thirds innings, gave up five hits, just one run, it was earned, walked two and struck out 21. A couple of the things that have changed with the Astros lineup since then is uh, some injuries. They will once again tonight be without Jordan Alvarez and be without Michael Brantley. Let's take Showtime and the Angels at a short price on the money line, minus 115 versus the Astros. We like it. Let's sneak peek here a little bit to win total Wednesday in the next segment because this win total really jumped out at me and I'm looking at under 8.0 wins for the Washington Commanders. First of all, I kind of just wish they stayed the football team. I enjoyed them being the Washington they football have. team. The logo was cool. It would have been fine to just stay uh, the football team, but they're now the Commanders and the Commanders organization has a lot of uh, stuff going on that has nothing to do with football. And you could argue it won't affect what happens on the field, but there is a lot going on over there in D.C. We all know the owner, Dan Snyder, the organization under investigation for having a hostile work call culture and defensive coordinator Jack Del Rio has made some uh, politically charged comments, which he's done before, not anything new at Del Rio, but I always feel like that's a slippery slope, regardless of your views in said political comments. That being said, talking about the commanders on the field, last year they were kind of up and down, but they finished 7-10 and in 2021, and that was mostly with Tyler Heineke as their starting quarterback. They missed out on last year's playoffs after they made it the year before, and this offseason they signed one Carson Wentz after the Colts let him go. And I think at this state, stage in the game, Musso, there are ve very few Carson Wentz believers still left out there. But Washington believes in him, apparently. And if you look at his stats from last season, they're not terrible. 27 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 
but if you watch the Colts last year, it felt a lot like Carson Wentz was holding them back a lot of the time. And he just made some really, really bad decisions at the worst possible time. I mean, we all remember their last game. All they had to do to make the playoffs was to beat the lowly Jacksonville Jaguars with an interim coach. And they couldn't even do that. Wentz was horrible in that game. So uh, I like some things about the commanders, but Carson Wentz, a quarterback, giving me a little bit of pause. Yeah, man. I mean, look, it, they're they're kind of a tough team to figure out. Uh, the the uh, the Washington Commanders. We'll definitely dive into them. Uh, it's just it's going to be a situation with how they can compete with the top of the division there. So uh, it'd be interesting to watch Washington this year. And they tried to get better over the offseason with Wentz. I thought they had an okay draft. They take Jahan Dotson out of Penn State, the wide receiver. And they take Brian Robinson Jr., the running back out of Alabama. And I really respect Ron Rivera as a head coach. I think he's a really good coach. Took the Panthers to the Super Bowl when he was still coaching in this division where the Saints play. And I think if you're going over when it, goes, when it comes to the commanders here, I think Ron Rivera has a lot to do with your argument. But... They also have Carson Wentz, like we said. I don't think their roster kind of up and down is as good as some of the other teams in the division. And I think it's an interesting number at eight, especially now that there's 17 games in the NFL season. Sometimes I need to remind myself of that. But if I had to pick today, I would go under eight wins for the Commanders in 2022. All right. That's our daily spread. It's presented to you by Suspense Games. Get over to suspenseevents.com and upgrade your game night with our guys, Spencer and Tyler Hunt. They bring a live trivia game show to you birthday party, game night, could be company team building, things like that. If you're looking for a way to test how your employees work in certain pressure environments, they can help you with that. All with the interactive game show concept. 45 minutes is how long the game takes. You can play two, three, four. How about this? You own a restaurant? Want to get some people in your in your, in your your restaurant a certain night? How about a trivia night? Suspense games, they can help you with that. Suspense events. Dot com is where you go to find out more information. That's right. They'll have trivia night at Burgersmith in Denham Springs tonight. That takes place every Wednesday at 630. And like Musso told you, this is a live experience where you have lights, podiums, confetti, just like you're on television. So whether you're looking for an extra competitive game night, some unique team, team building, or you want to just take your party to a whole new level, check them out at suspenseevents.com and upgrade your game night with Suspense Games. We'll grab a break. Come back on the other side. More early line. Here to follow, 104.5 ESPN, Bad Rouge. Mario and Musso, the early line. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 104.5 ESPN.com. Crime has serious consequences, but anyone can make a mistake. If you find yourself in trouble with the law, know that you have rights, and it's okay to demand them. The law offices of O.C. Brown are here to protect you and your rights. Felony or misdemeanor, DUI or drug charge, no matter what crime you're accused of, you still have rights. Let the law offices of O.C. Brown uphold them. Call 225-343-1111, your law firm for a lifetime. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care, it's more advanced care. This is innovating healthcare at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. And this year, 2022, it's time to finally treat yourself. Bring your boat to the next level with front to back boat service. You want the latest and greatest marine technology? You want to go to the place that has not one, but two NMEA certified techs. Family owned and operated by the Sherman family for 30 years. Front to back is the answer in Baton Rouge for all of your custom boat needs. So head to front to back boat or find them on Facebook, front to back boat service. My own people call me an Uncle Tom. I play music. Been wine and dine by royalty, trying to bring people together, all people. But regardless of all that kind of stuff, I'm still Louis Armstrong. Here's the man you're waiting for, the king of jazz, Louis Satchmo Armstrong. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks 
have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. At All-Star Toyota, you get it all. If you're in the market for an all-new Toyota vehicle, come see our friendly and knowledgeable sales team at All-Star Toyota. Located in Baton Rouge at the corner of Airline and Goodwood, we've been serving our community since 2005 by offering a large selection of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get behind the wheel of your dream car and take a test drive at All-Star Toyota today. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. On Thursdays, off the bench, just one week away from SEC Media Days, football is here. Plus, break down Nick Saban lamenting the future of college football, off the bench, 7 to 10 a.m., 104.5 ESPN. Early line with Mario and Musso, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. We are 22 days away from preseason football in the NFL, and it's Wednesday. You know what that means, Musso. Time for another edition of Win Total Wednesday, and today we will break down the NFC East, a.k.a. the NFC Least, a.k.a. the NFC Beast, whatever you want to call it. But this is an interesting division, Musso, because like you alluded to a little bit there in the first segment, you can argue that every team got better over the offseason. And this is a division that has not seen a repeat champion since 2004 when the Eagles won it back-to-back-to-back, Andy Reid, Donovan McNabb. That was a long time ago. But last year they did send two teams to the playoffs. The Cowboys won the division. The Eagles had a winning record, lost in the first round to the Buccaneers. And if you look at the win totals right now on DraftKings, Going into 2022, the Cowboys over-under set at 10 wins. The Eagles have an over-under of 9.5 wins. They have the hook there. The Commanders over-under 8 wins. And the New York Giants over-under 7 wins. The Commanders jumped out to me from the jump. Talked about it there in the first segment. Does anything in particular come to mind for you when you see these win totals? I think you have to really think and and research all of them. I I mean, Vegas really kind of... Kind of nailed them, I, I, I do believe. Let, let's start with Dallas, because uh, Dallas Dallas has the best team on paper in this division. Like, on paper, this team should repeat. They're going to be very good offensively. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, toting the rock in the backfield. you got CeeDee Lamb in the receiving core. Like, offensively, they're going to put up points. We know that. Uh, you, you like pieces that they have on defense as well. On paper, best team. Schedule is Really interesting. The number of 10 that it's set at, really interesting. For the Dallas Cowboys, just because they are the best team on paper, because you know what they are offensively and defensively, it really comes down to this. It's as simple as this. They have to win the games that they're supposed to win. And if they do that, they can go over the 10 wins. You look at Dallas's schedule. They're already, just here in July, five games where they're a touchdown or more favorite already. You win those five games, you have a great chance at going over. It's a tough start. I mean, you have to face the Buccaneers on on Sunday Night Football as an underdog, and let's be honest, you're probably not going to win that game. Then you have to face the Cincinnati Bengals the week after that at, at home, but that's going to be a really tough game, and you have a good shot to start 0-2, uh, 0-2 in that one. And 
and their road schedule. You know, you get, obviously you have a game with the with the Eagles on the road, which will be tough. You do have to make a trip to the Rams as well as the Vikings as well as the Packers and the Titans. So I mean, the road schedule is tough, and I guess that's maybe where it offsets it a little bit. It's just a really hard one to figure out. If they drop a game against, you know, say the Jaguars on the road. That, that's a game where that, that they should probably win. Like Carson Wentz did last year. Right, yeah. They <laughs> drop that game. It's going to be really tough for them to go over that win total. So, I mean, 10 feels like a really, really good number. Feels like Vegas kind of pegged that one right there. But for me, it's probably either be, because like because of that reason, for me, it's probably a stay away spot uh, when it when it comes to Dallas. I'm with you, and on on the surface, I would think maybe push on the ten wins, lean under if I need to. And to Dallas's credit, last year they did exactly what you just described. They beat the teams they were supposed to, and th- against the teams they were not supposed to beat, they did not play very well. Because last year Dallas six and zero against the rest of the NFC East. But against the rest of the NFL in a regular season, they went 6-6. Six and six. So if the rest of the division is getting a little bit better, then maybe you see a little bit of decline there. And I think the, uh, the, the composition of their roster is really interesting. Still really good up and down the roster on both sides of the ball, really. I think their defense is a little underrated, in my opinion. We were talking with Taylor a little bit there during the break about Diggs, the cornerback from Alabama, coming into his second year. They have Micah Parsons, who's a physical a freak. Van Der Esch, the linebacker who played really well against the Saints when they beat him a couple years ago when the Saints were the one seed. I, I think they can maybe miss Amari Cooper a little bit. C.D. Lamb's going to take a bigger role. He was already a 1,000-yard receiver last year, but I, I think last year they went, they really beat up on the division and were not good against everybody else. They might come down with a two matchup against the Eagles, who are my pick to win the division, by the way, but when it comes to Dallas, I'm with you. I, I say that looks right in 10 weeks. And it, it could... it. Like you said, it could, could could come down to them and the Eagles, and I mean that's where it's like, man, you win those games you're supposed to do win or not. It, it, that's just it, it's cliche, but it really is that simple for the yeah. Dallas Cowboys this year. Let's let's talk about the Eagles then, because they're my pick to win the division, man. I think last year the Eagles took advantage of their schedule, similar to the Cowboys, but I think Sirianni did a really good job in his first year as head coach, and I think they can build on that this season. And I know the the pause when it comes to the Eagles is Jalen Hurts, and that makes a lot of sense. You know, he kind of is what he is at this stage in his career, but he's been really good in the scheme of, of within what they want to do, and he has a really good receiving core. They pick up AJ Brown from that the Titans. Huge. Devontae Smith is already there. He had an awesome rookie year. And I think Zach Pascal from the uh, Indianapolis Colts was an underrated pickup at, at wide receiver. They also had the best offensive line in the NFL. Statistically, they were the best rushing team in the league, led by Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey. And their defense is really good, man. Darius Slay, Barnett, you have some really good players there. And I know Trevor Simeon was starting that game for the Saints last year when I was broadcasting in Spanish, but that game was rough. The Eagles defense really whooped their butt for four quarters. And what they, they don't really hide what they want to do. They don't really win pretty, but I think they can step up and at least beat Dallas one time and, like the Cowboys, take advantage of the rest of their schedule. And I think the Eagles can win the division this year. It comes down to Jalen Hurts. That That is just the main quandary with this team it's it's the only thing you really need to look at is Jalen Hurts and it's worth noting he came on really strong at the end of last season and he made a sizable jump in both completion completion percentage and quarterback rating so Jalen Hurts did improve but again it he came on late after a slow start you cannot afford another slow start if you're the Philadelphia Eagles when talking win total because their schedule early is very manageable and not to mention, they are not an underdog in any of their first four games. So, at least right now. They're favored by four in the opener against the Lions, by two and a half against the Vikings. It's a pick at Washington week three, and then they're favored by better than a touchdown against the Jacksonville Jaguars at this moment. You could be looking at a 4 no start there if the Jalen Hurts from the end of last season shows up at the beginning of this season. And if that's the case, you look at the rest of their schedule where they do end up with some tough stretches, but you get out to that 4 no start, it's a lot easier to get to 10 wins and go over that total. And I think that's a manageable goal for, for Jalen Hurts. Again, Even 3-1 and one would be great. Yeah, and, and that's very manageable for them too. And like I said, he doesn't really have to light the world on fire, but just build on what they were able to do last year and take advantage of your stud receivers and your stud offensive line. I really give Seriani a lot of credit. Like you said, they played much better down the stretch last season, and a lot of that was because of changes he made to the offense. Let Jalen Hurts run the ball more. Don't hide what you're trying to do. And the stats for Hurts really show the improvement because he improved his completion percentage last season 
from uh, 52% to 61.3%, which is better, but still not great. And his QB rating jumped from 776 two years ago to 87.2 last year, same thing. A little bit better, not exactly where you want to be. And I know he's a little limited from the pocket. I mean, when we're talking about the Eagles, I see a lot of parallels with them and the Ravens in the AFC. But I still think they could be a dangerous team just based on their defense, based on the weapons around Jalen Hurts. I think he can do good enough to get the Eagles over 9.5 wins, ultimately get them in the playoffs. Again, all about the start, though, because think about it. When you have an easy start, what does that normally mean? You have a tough finish, and that is the case for the Eagles. So in the last eight weeks of the season, they have games at Indianapolis, at home versus the Packers, at home versus the Titans. Those three games are all in a row. That's a really tough stretch. You also have a game at the Cowboys and a game versus the Saints. So, I mean, that is a brutal stretch down the down. Uh, that's a brutal stretch uh, down the end of the season there for Philadelphia. Uh for me, if you like Jalen Hurts, if you believe in what you saw from him, take the over. If not, stay away. I'm a believer, at least in terms of thinking he could at least get them to nine wins into the playoffs. The playoffs, that's a different story, but I like the over on the Eagles' win total, and I like the under on the Giants' win total because the Giants, Musso, are kind of like the, uh, the fetch meme from Mean Girls, right? Las Vegas, based on the win totals, they keep trying to make the Giants happen, and it has not happened. Because this is a team that has gone under their win total every season since 2017. And Giants fans are excited about the future, and we talked about it before the show. Maybe down the road, the Giants can be good under Brian Dable. But this year, you're relying on a really young team. They got George's Evan Neal and Oregon's Kayvon Thibodeau in the first round. Those are two of the best players from college football last year, but they're still rookies. Also took Cordell Flott, who's probably going to be starting on their defense as a third-round pick. So they do have some good young talent, but you're still relying a lot on Daniel Jones, who hasn't really shown me anything that he can be a consistent starting quarterback in the NFL. And this is a first-year head coach. So I think given what the rest of the division looks like, the Giants maybe get a little bit better. Like 6-11 and 11 would be improvement from the four wins last season but ultimately I still don't think they're a very good football team this year and I would definitely go under on the seven wins. not to mention they don't believe in Daniel Jones at all the guy didn't have his option picked up and he's just sitting there playing his, his last year knowing it's probably his last year uh that's never a good place to be and I'm not saying he's gonna sit there and phone it in I mean, he's gonna you know do his best and, and try to show that he should be given a deal after this and is the quarterback of the future uh, but the Giants are underdogs right now in 12 of their 17 games. I just do not see them actually being very good. I don't understand the love from them with people actually placing bets on the New York Giants right now to win the division. I, I, I don't think they're anywhere close to as good as the top of that division with the Cowboys and the Eagles. I would go under seven for the for the, uh, for the the New York Giants. Oh, man, that loss. The, the Saints lost to them last year still gets me. The Saints just win that game. I don't want to talk about that. Stop them on that one possession. They make the playoffs. And this is a team that touts its defense as being strong. So that result from last year really ticks me off a little bit, but it is what it is. I still don't think it means anything ultimately for the Giants last season or this season. As far as the uh, Washington Commanders, we talked about them a little bit in the first segment. I like Ron Rivera a lot. I think he's a really good head coach, but ultimately I don't think Carson Wentz is uh is very good when it comes to the other quarterbacks compare that you're going to compare him to in this division. And I think the commanders go under. I think Ron Rivera is a good coach, but I don't see him getting eight wins. I think this team could go eight and nine. I mean, I think I think they could hit the eight, but uh, for me, it'd be a push. I mean, I wouldn't really you know, get your money back. Um, I just. It's kind of the same thing with the Giants. I don't think this is a team that's good enough to really compete with the top of the division with, with the Giant. Oh, excuse me, with the Cowboys and the Eagles. Uh, the schedule isn't, you know, unbearable uh, the way it's set up. I mean, they, they they don't really have brutal back-to-back games. I mean, I guess uh, at home versus the Eagles, then at Dallas is is tough. They're not favored in either of those. Uh, but I mean, you know, look, you have the Titans, but in between that, you have a matchup with the Bears, and then you play the Packers. You know, you have the Colts, and in between that, you have the Vikings, and then you play the Eagles. So, I mean, it's not it's not anything overly un, unbearable for them schedule-wise. Uh, Carson Wentz is going to put up a lot of numbers. He might not win you a lot of football games, and that's ultimately what we're talking about. 
Uh, I, I would think either they hit eight or they go under. Yeah, I think 2017 Carson Wentz is dead and gone. I don't think we're yeah. seeing that guy again. And I think some people that, that are hoping he can succeed think that we will eventually see that guy, but he's dead and gone, both on the field and kind of in terms of the relationships that he made too. Because I hear very few people, whether it be uh, Jim Ursay, the owner of the Colts, he does, he's not very nice to many people, but former teammates as well. He hasn't just been a very good presence throughout his time in the NFL, and that's not a good thing for your starting quarterback. No, and he also has to stay healthy, which has just been a monumental task for him so far in his career in the NFL. It has. Shout out to Josiah Clark in the YouTube chat. He says he's an Eagles fan, and I do not have confidence in Jalen Hurts. Heard a lot of praise this offseason, so hopefully he changes my mind. Again, I think Jalen Hurts kind of is what he is. He's an excellent runner. He's a little limited from the pocket, but he has a really good O-line, really good receivers, and a solid defense as well. So I think he, he could lead your team, Josiah, to nine wins and ultimately the division championship. I don't disagree with you, Josiah. I, too, lack confidence in him. But that was my whole, like, if you have confidence, take the over because it's an easy start to the schedule for them and, he came on really strong. If you don't, I would either just stay away or, or go under. We shall see about the NFC East and about the rest of the divisions really soon because we're only 22 days away from preseason football in the NFL, which means we're really close to regular season football in the NFL, which means I'm excited to hopefully make some money this season. We'll see if that happens. We'll try and make some more money before the end of the show with some plays here, and we'll be right back to the early line, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Early line with Mario and Russo. 104.5 ESPN. This week on DropBiscuit.com or wherever you listen to podcasts is our new series, Pops, the Louis Armstrong story. Pops is brought to you by New Orleans and Company. Check out NewOrleans.com and come visit New Orleans. Before we begin any electrical work here, we perform a home safety check that begins at your electrical panel to make sure that you and your family are safe. For all your upgrades, installations, and repairs, call Mr. Electric. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Rejuvame, we specialize in medically monitored hormone replacement therapy, giving you the energy you need for all life's challenges. We can help get your day started. One, two, one, two. This isn't just another day. It's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same-day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge area. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. It's no secret, the best oysters in Baton Rouge are at Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar. Enjoy mouth-watering South Louisiana flavor and oysters from all over the country. And 
don't forget our nightly drink specials. Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar, located in downtown Baton Rouge. Eli's always been into grilling. It took us a while to see it, but the signs were there. What are you doing, Eli? I knew grilling was my thing. I have been talking about it throughout my career. Happy with the results? I am. Got the new grill from barbecueguys.com. It performed great. My advice, as I always told my boys, do more of what you're born to do. Barbecue Guys, for those who were born to grill. You want cheese on your burger pops? I'll take a little cheese. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way. Ascona invited you to join us for Wednesday's Hump Day AFR presented by Pluckers. We'll continue our LSU position preview looking at the secondary. And it's a Whiskey Wednesday. Join us 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're getting the early line with Mario and Musso on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. All right, Mario. So uh, golf's final major gets underway uh, technically tomorrow, but, uh, you know, it's going to start at 6 a.m. here, uh, you know, because they're across the pond at St. Andrews, the old course, the home of golf, if you want to call it that, 150th. Open Championship. Tried to link up with our guy, Rob Bolton, today. Couldn't get it done. But uh, I do want to talk about it a little bit because there's a couple plays this week uh, that I am very, very invested in and that I like a lot. Let's talk about it then. Excuse me. Number one, let's talk about Roy McIlroy real quick. Rory. So uh, Rory's the betting favorite to uh, to win the Open Championship this week at uh, plus 900, plus 1,000, depending on which book you're shopping and look, he very well could take it home this week, okay? He, he has a great open championship record, and overall he's riding a streak of seven consecutive top 20 finishes. He's playing some great golf. But there is something to be said about not winning a major in the last eight years, especially after winning four before your 25th birthday. That's what Roy McIlroy did. One thing he has done is finish in the top 10 of these things, though. No matter how bad it looks at some points, he always seems to make his run and finish high. That's kind of been the issue in the last eight years is it's been maybe he's had a bad back nine here. He's had one bad round out of four, and it's just prevented him from winning but not prevented him from finishing the top ten. Rory has 26 top tens out of 54 majors. That is 48% of the time. I think he gets number 27 this weekend. Take Rory McIlroy, that's what I'm doing, to top ten at the Open Championship, coming back even money. It sounds like a good bet, man. Like you said, I think he just needs to not let things snowball when it gets bad. Like, it's always just one poor round, one poor stretch of holes. It always does Rory in. But I think that's a pretty good price on him. And if he could avoid that, the snowball effect, then I think he could be in pretty good shape. The other one, I love me some Jordan Speed this week. Absolutely love it. Took him 16-1 to 1 to win the whole thing. Jordan Spieth and Lynx golf it just goes together like a hand in a glove. I mean, the guy, first of all, great with a wedge, which is key to this style. And the putter, traditionally the best part of his game. The greens at the old course, massive. So Speed's putter could come in very handy when it comes to lagging. You have to avoid three putts at St. Andrews. He's also got one of the best open championship records in the field. So you go back to 2015 at St. Andrews, mind you. He tied for fourth, missed the three-man playoff by one shot. Zach Johnson ended up winning that year. He won in 2017 at Royal Burkdale after making an incredible bogey from the practice range on the 13th to stay in the final round against Matt Kuchar. That bogey led to just, I mean, he almost hold his shot of the par 3 14th after that and would win the tournament. And since that win, keep in mind, while he wasn't winning at all or missing cuts left and right on the PGA Tour, since that win, he's finished tied for ninth at the Open Championship, tied for 20th, and then solo second last year. He absolutely loves this event. Recent success uh, could play in as well here. Already a win on the card in 2022 and is coming off tied 10th at last week's Scottish Open. Everybody loves to go there, get the tune up. I love Jordan Spieth. 
this week at the Open Championship. Plus 1,600, 16 to 1. Got my money on it. A lot of people do. And Jordan Spieth loves him some ice cream. Did you see this on the course? I know he's heating up right now. So maybe, I did see this. maybe he wanted a little cool down. But I just thought he was I just thought this was funny. Somebody went and handed a cone of ice cream to Jordan Spieth. And he's clearly getting ready to to go back to action to to swing the golf club again. So he just takes a couple of really big bites, as you can see, gets his money worth, gives it back to the caddy, and goes right back to action. I just think golf as a sport is really cool where you could do stuff like that. I just want that to be me I, I want someone to randomly come up and hand me ice cream cones yeah. throughout my day that sounds incredible mid segment and then just go right yeah, back to the microphone mid segment <laughs> someone walks in with an ice cream cone. look I'm mean, hey we had an ice cream truck parked in the parking lot yesterday while we, we were on air i mean that would have been the perfect opportunity for that to happen that would have been awesome that'd been great shout out to jordan Spee's posse for uh having that yeah. ice cream cone ready and shout out to him for eating it so nonchalantly and going right back to what he was doing i mean he's got michael greller to caddy for him on the golf course and he's got whoever that gentleman was to be his ice cream caddy and i think that's incredible i think that's incredible too he's I, a cool cat Jordan. i would like that with actually more than just ice cream maybe someone just brings me a beer every now and then or or a cheeseburger or something that'd be incredible can't go wrong with the cheeseburger hell sure. no it's a fantastic food no again I, I i love i love that golf gives people the opportunity to do stuff like this it's the only sport and jordan speed is hoping that uh that ice cream give him the proper nutrition to keep playing good golf and uh hopefully win this tournament if jordan speed wins this tournament and cashes the ticket i am totally giving all the credit to the ice cream cone 100 and it looked like so it was looked like a vanilla cone but it looked like it had like a piece of chocolate kind of in it. Yeah, it was fancy. It was fancy. That's probably one of those fancy ice cream uh, cones that you get at the country clubs. Yeah, that I mean, he was it, able it to get good. complimentary. Look good. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm all for it, man. Um, I, if anyone just wants to, you know, sign up somehow and just be the guy who randomly hands me a beer or ice cream cones throughout the day, I think that'd be phenomenal, yeah. and I'm, I'm open to suggestions on that. I think Snoop Dogg hires someone to do that, but it's just not with beers. I was about to say, it's probably <laughs> not with the beer. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense, actually, for someone to do that for Snoop Dogg. If I was Snoop Dogg, had that habit, uh, contrary to popular belief, I don't, <laughs> had that habit, and I uh, had the money that Snoop Dogg did, I would absolutely do that as well. 100%. And if I was down on my luck and needed a job, that's probably a pretty decent salary, yeah. judging by the volume of product that Snoop Dogg consumes. Yeah. I wonder how much that guy's getting paid. Don't think we're going to see that on a golf course during during a match. But the I way mean, John Daly, man, he could just have someone handing him heaters. That'd be awesome. I was trying a way to fit John Daly into this, trying to find a way to fit John Daly into this conversation, and I couldn't do it. So I thank you for doing that. But You're yes, welcome. The NIL deal that he got with Hooters and his son that was badass his son is the same person as him which is fantastic I mean their swings obviously the same too it's great but uh, yeah I, I don't think John Daly would like that though John Daly's so blue collar so such a you know just that hard working guy I think he'd want to handle his own heaters uh his own darts there but I mean that'd be something perfect for him if he just had somebody on the golf course just come stick a stick a cigarette in his mouth and light it. That'd be awesome. That would be badass. Hey man, whatever happened to Bryson DeChambeau? I feel like we haven't heard too much. Oh, he's from on him. the live tour now. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bry yeah, okay, Bryson. Okay. Uh, Bryson went to the live tour. He's also injured uh, a little bit, so he's he's hurting. He's hurting. He's hurting. His like body that. or his ego? Yeah, uh, I guess a little bit of both. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I don't really keep up with him too much. Probably not. A, not a big Bryson guy. So a yeah. DeChambeau, I think is is that. Yeah, not. Not one of those. Not I was just, I was just curious. We haven't heard his name uttered uh, in a long time on this no. program. That's where he is. That's where he is. He's on the, uh, he's on the live tour. I think he's, he's at, uh, I think he's at the Open Championship this week. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked all the way down at the, uh, all the way down at the field. Gotcha. I had to read up on my Bryson DeChambeau content. I guess. There you go. We're gonna grab our final break of the show. Come back. Close out a Wednesday edition of Early Line next. It's 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. The Early Line. 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products.
serious consequences, but anyone can make a mistake. If you find yourself in trouble with the law, know that you have rights and it's okay to demand them. The law offices of O.C. Brown are here to protect you and your rights. Felony or misdemeanor, DUI or drug charge, no matter what crime you're accused of, you still have rights. Let the law offices of O.C. Brown uphold them. Call 225-343-1111, your law firm for a lifetime. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care, it's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. And this year, 2022, it's time to finally treat yourself. Bring your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service. You want the latest and greatest marine technology? You want to go to the place that has not one, but two NMEA certified techs. Family owned and operated by the Sherman family for 30 years. Front-to-back is the answer in Baton Rouge for all of your custom boat needs. So head to fronttobackboatservice.com or find them on Facebook, Front to Back Boat Service. My own people call me an Uncle Tom. I play music. Been wine and dined by royalty. I'm trying to bring people together. All people. But regardless of all that kind of stuff, I'm still Louis Armstrong. Here's the man you're waiting for, the king of jazz, Louis Satchmo Armstrong. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Le posso offrire un caffè? Le posso offrire un caffè? Andiamo insieme da me, non c'è. Sandigraf for the Wednesday evening edition of Game Time presented by Bet Rivers. Finn Baum on Burbank and Lee, right by the brand new Rouses. That's right, 6 to 8 p.m. Game Time presented by Bet Rivers from Finn Baum on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Early line with Mario and Musso, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Wrapping up the show here on another Wednesday, another win total Wednesday. Had a lot of fun breaking down the NFC East. Go catch that conversation on demand if you missed it. Now we'll wrap up today's program with today's Citizens Bank poll of the day. And the question posed to the audience relevant to what we're going to talk about in this segment was betting on which of the following makes you the biggest degenerate, which is the most degenerate thing to bet out of these options. Preseason football, summer league basketball, foreign baseball leagues, or oh. pro sports drafts, NBA, NFL. I know MLB is a little different, but you know what I mean. And the winner of the poll was foreign baseball, 40% of the votes there. Preseason football coming in second, 36%. Summer league, 20%. And the drafts at 4%. I have experience betting all of these except for foreign baseball. And it's fun to find like the little angles when it comes to preseason football, I think as well as the drafts, because you can research, you can find little angles and find good odds. But the summer league is just pretty much throwing darts at the board, at least so far. You really don't know what to expect. You have guys injured. You have guys that weren't playing before that do start playing. And foreign baseball, I just have no clue. So I do have to say I agree with the results of this poll. Yes, yeah, I, I would actually think summer league is more degenerate than uh, than preseason NFL football. Uh, for one, no stars on those teams ever play in summer league. Like, you're just... You're betting on guys that don't don't act like you've heard. You don't know anything about these guys. They're 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 going to be G League players in a couple in a couple months. Like, you're, that's you, I have a number for you to call. Like seriously, I really have a number for you to call if you're betting on like Korean baseball. Like, chill out. That <laughs> that happens at three o'clock in the morning. Shout out to uh, Jacob Hester, OTB crew. 
Uh, speaking of uh, degenerate bets and, and betting, did you see this story? I know you did because you found this. Good find, Muso. So this is nuts. A bartender in India and some farm workers that he hired staged fake cricket matches on a YouTube stream, and they fooled bettors in Russia into giving them close to $4,000. So, so this is the breakdown here. Lead schemer Shob Davda used to live in Russia, and when he was there, he worked in a Russian, a Russian a bar, pub, whatever you want to call it, for eight months. He then moved to India, hired 21 guys that he found on a farm, created fake rosters, got uniforms of actual cricket teams in India for his players to wear, and put on this YouTube stream. They also had fake umpires that had walkie-talkies that were talking to Davda, and they helped influence the outcome of the games. They put fake crowd noise in there, and this worked for a little while. People were watching this YouTube stream, finding out where to put bets on it, sending their money to this guy, and it was working. But eventually, uh, this scheme was discovered. They got arrested, so it's all for naught at the end of the day. But I do have to say, I respect the hustle here, and I can't believe these uh, these very sketchy bettors in, in Russia must not be playing paying very close attention. This is nuts. This story is absolutely crazy, yes. I mean, first of all, the fact that they were using real teams' uniforms and were able to replicate that, that's a lot of work. The, the, the links that this guy, the organizer, went to to make this happen for what amounted to $3,700, a little bit north of $3,700 before getting busted, uh, are just elaborate. The uniforms actually creating a stream, having these guys out there actually playing the game. But first of all, if you're betting on this and watching, wouldn't you notice, man, that guy looks real similar to the guy who played for the other team in yesterday's game that I watched and bet on and probably lost money. Like, shouldn't that have tipped you off that, oh, that's the same guy? There's only 21 of them. First of all, again, YouTube stream, wild that you set that up. My favorite part, Mario, might be that they found a guy to imitate like the most famous cricket commentator, and put him on the broadcast to call the matches. That is patently absurd. Uh, I saw that, and I saw the broadcaster's reaction to it, and he was like, I want to hear what the fake broadcaster sounds like. And that's just one of many questions. Like, how did they even find this stream in Russia, an Indian league, which, by the way, the actual season for the IPL ended three weeks before these games took place. So they must, must not be I mean, playing... Like, how do you bet money and, and not know that? And if you see the video, we might not have time to play the video from the article, which is cool, but it looks so fake. Like, like the guys that are in the video kind of remind me uh, of that guy that was at the Pelicans game that one time in full uniform shooting around with the Pelicans. And they didn't notice it for a while until a police officer finally came on the court and was like, yo, you're, you're not on the team. Like, they should have seen that. And they should have known that the actual season was over. Like, they, they need to find out who these Russian betters are and ask them these questions. I mean, yes, yeah, so I, really. I mean, I guess the the moral of the story is be careful. Be selective with, with what you bet on, in a way. Actually, at least know a little. So, I mean, if the season ended three weeks, it didn't just randomly start back up, right? I mean, it's, it's look, it's not the NBA that's around all year round. Uh, that That's really... That's damning evidence right there uh, against these uh, these degenerate betters who dumped thirty seven hundred dollars uh, into this fake Indian cricket league. Uh, also, this so we mentioned that the guy, the organizer, hired twenty one uh, twenty one farmers to you know play the roles of this league. He was paying them the equivalent of five dollars. I mean, that's kind of my whole question is to the organizer and to the guys who you know were the players. Was it all really worth it for thirty seven hundred bucks? That you got out of it? I don't know, man. Yeah. Inflation in a different country. I thought of this too, but $5 for them might be a lot more than $5 to us. You Maybe. Know? I don't know. But either way, I mean, you're looking at the video right now. Like, it just it looks kind of grainy, first of all. It's okay quality, but just look at how these guys move. They do that not. The field looks like trash. They do not look like professional athletes. So I, I can't believe they were able to pull this off. But ultimately, it was all for naught. They got arrested. And I, honestly, I feel like they were hoping they came away with a little bit more than 4K before they ultimately got caught. But I do have to say, I, I respect the hustle. Be careful what you bet on out there, folks. Yes. It's okay to be a degenerate every now and then. Just don't go full degenerate and bet on fake leagues. And if you're going to bet on a league that's maybe foreign, make sure that league is actually in season before you place down any bets. That would probably be some good advice. Hopefully we gave you some good advice on today's show as we broke down the NFC East. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll make some picks as part of our daily spread presented by Suspense Games, and we'll continue to look ahead to the football season, both in the NFL and in college. 
that'll do it for us today. Stay tuned for After Further Review and Matt Moscona coming up next, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. <laughs>